So before we start, I will steal 30 seconds from my guests <clears throat> to say really fast the fact that I had on my podcast 20, around 20 of the most popular people in crypto space. And I can tell you for sure, there wasn't one who said that CBDC is a good idea. So the consensus in the crypto space, and you have to know this and understand this, is to quote uh, a well-known hedge fund manager, Mark Yusko, is that CBDC is pure evil. And I think the Romanian society, being a post-communist society, should think twice before agreeing to such practices that remind us of some very old and horrible times. Good. Now that you know something you didn't care about from my side, Thank you very much for being here. I will, uh, be, before I will ask questions, I will leave my guests for like 20 seconds to say a few things about themselves and their companies because it's important to know who is answering these questions because in crypto space we have no experts. The domain is too young to have experts, so we just have some opinions and it's important to know who is saying what. So guys, the, the rule is we have no rule. So whenever you hear a question, feel free to answer and there is no right, uh, the right way to do it. So feel free to present yourself. Hello, my name is Bogdan Almash. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Ronin, a crowd equity crowdfunding platform and uh, Aseto which is a Swiss company uh, which will uh, launch in September uh, a mobile app for tokenizing real estate assets. Um, talking about my past experience in blockchain, together with Sergio in 2018, we started uh, an association for emerging technologies. We organized in 2019 together Romania Blockchain Summit. And uh, we tried to promote uh, adoption of uh, emerging technologies, blockchain, and so on in, uh, in Romania, and not only. Hi, guys. My name is Avicii Ciran. I'm the founder of Brandminds, Digitalium, Wilmon Capital, and uh, lately, uh, our new project, which is called Brandminter. I'm a huge a fan of NFTs, and um, I'm here to, to share with you my opinion about what I think about this domain. Hi, my name is Sergio Draganush. I'm the founder of CryptoCoin Pro, the largest fiat ramp in this part of the world. And currently I'm working on Ludo, which is the first search engine for the metaverse. Hi, my name is Mihai Dragan. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Ovid, uh, a ticketing and cashless payments uh, solution for events. We do NFT tickets. Um, we like to see ourselves as leaders in this space. And the cool things about NFT tickets is it adds utility to NFTs. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Sebastian Cognescu, and I'm the CEO and founder of Tailpath. Uh, it's a company, a US company that is adding traceability uh, to supply chains by using uh, public blockchains. We are adding transparency and trust to these uh, uh, supply chains. And um, I think it's going to be an interesting discussion today on NFTs and uh, crypto. Uh, lately, I'm uh, more of a devil's advocate, and I, I would, I'm just looking forward to see what my colleagues are saying in the panel so that we can have an interesting discussion on this topic. Cool. Now that we know that we have people with winning records, uh, so we will uh, benefit from really good information. I'm curious, how would you explain NFTs to someone who has 12 years old? Because I think it's important to explain NFTs to 12 years old and to 60 years old. So for someone who is like the age of some of your kids, may I? So we start with the devil's advocate. Yeah, I would say there's no way to explain to a 12-year-old what's an NFT because they really don't care about it. But uh, you could try and say, um, look, you're playing uh, Roblox probably, 
or Minecraft, and you have some items or some thing built in there that you're willing to pay for, and maybe you want to make sure you really own that stuff. That, that's basically the easiest way I can uh, uh, try to, to explain for a 12-year-old. Uh, honey, you know those chocolates I bought you last night, and I'm seeing they're yours. Well, how about uh, everyone knows they're yours, and no one can take that away from you. So that's how I would explain NFTs. That's good. If we are talking with kids, especially with ones uh, at 12 uh, years old, uh, it's obviously that we need to refer to games because for most of them, most of their time is being spent in this direction. So explain to uh, 11 years old kids, in my case, uh, that daddy, this, you know those items and maps and characters that you have in Roblox, those ones, you'll be able to be the only, the, the single owner of each of them, plus you'll be able to trade them for other assets that you like. This would be something that will make a lot of sense for, for kids, in my opinion. So, uh, I'm talking with my daughter, Roberta, and uh, um, I was thinking about how to explain what is an NFT. And uh, I, I frame her with, imagine that there are 10,000 teddy bears. <laughs> um, and you own, this one is unique. This one is brown, uh, and there are some other colors, some other uh, textures. And this is your only teddy bear that you can, uh, this is your unique teddy bear. I was thinking about Roblox as well because it's the, the most uh, efficient way of uh, telling them. Probably something like uh, this is the proof that you'll store in your phone that the house you built on Roblox it is really yours. Something like this. But I feel that the real challenge is explaining what an NFT is to a 60 or 70 years old. And uh, I tried this with my, my parents. So there we have the borderline of their, uh, their capability of understanding. And uh, higher than a scanned document is very difficult to, to understand. Sure. So I think this is the real challenge. Actually, what I would like to add here is that we think how would we explain. But in fact, on Roblox, actually it happened on Pet Simulator X, they, they, they had some NFTs like half a year ago, and I remember my, my, my small, uh, small kid coming to me in the evening and asking, Daddy, can you please try to get one of them? And I said, yeah, for sure, it will be like 50 bucks or something like this. Okay, well, it ended up, those assets ended up on 15K plus. Why? Wow. Because for the kids, having an item which is unique, makes a lot of sense, which for the rest of the world might not make a lot of sense. Now you might think, oh, it's a worthless item in a game. It's stupid, yeah? What if I would tell you that with that NFT, a kid would be able to, 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 to get like assets for which you would have to pay like 500 bucks per day on a, ba on a daily basis once you own them. So once the utility is coming in the top of an NFT, then it starts being crazy. And obviously, from, from, from this point, the, the results are, are, are very, very interesting. Yeah. Just a quick note. Whenever you don't feel like answering a question, you are not like, forced to do it. So we will not say, like, the other guy said, I agree with him. Da -da 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 -da. We've seen NFTs going crazy in the last 12 months. And I'm curious to know why do you think that happened and like the, the reason why it happened and why only in 2021? Why not in 2020 and why not in 2022? There are two possible answers. Of course, nobody knows. But um, why crypto goes high or lower? Um, and in F NFT's case, I think the, the first, the main reason was uh, and still is greed. Basically, people want to get rich quick. And um, if you saw your neighbor getting rich, you want to get rich. So basically, you invest and you put some money to it. And in the end, um, the system maybe collapses or maybe not. 
That would be one answer, and I said, I'm a bit grim today, and I'm <laughs> not going to share the enthusiasm that I usually do on the crypto space, because I want to be real. And uh, the second answer, possible answer, would be that we finally see the first cycle of adoption ending and going to the next uh, cycle of adoption and we see more and more people that are interested in this space and that see value in the products that crypto is offering so so far crypto was offering uh, maybe um, faster and more secure transactions decentralization ownership of assets and so on but now with nfts we get to a new level of ownership and uh, we have actually the potential of creating uh, uh, value. So I would, I would incline to say that, of course, the second is the nice and optimistic version of the answer. But unfortunately, uh, the price, in, in terms of price, not in adop adop adoption, uh, I think greed is uh, the main reason. Okay, so we were greedy in 2021. For not only. We were uh, in, uh, in our homes. I think this is another very interesting uh, reason. For, uh, for the hype, but uh, for me it was very difficult to understand what happened last year because uh, we had uh, NFTs since 2014. Prob probably uh, most of us remember about CryptoKitties in 2017, I think, or 2018. Uh, but uh, in 2021 uh, we, need, uh, we needed uh, toys for grown-ups, I think. And uh, NFTs probably came in the right moment. We had uh, that uh, success story with uh, the 69 million uh, sold uh, with the 5,000 uh, days, yeah, every day. Yeah. You remember the, the graphics. And uh, probably this uh, success story started to inspire a lot of uh, uh, people uh, staying uh, in their homes and uh, only surfing uh, online. And probably this hype uh, was generated uh, this way. Uh, I think that uh, the, NFT, the NFT started like to be a form of investment first. Uh, then uh, the utility appeared that took NFTs to the second level. And I think uh, right now that uh, the, the, the new lifespan of NFTs would be something to, to have utility in uh, metaverses or to exchange with physical products to connect with the, the digital world. But I think that uh, the hype were, uh, was first generated by, uh, as a form of investment. Yeah, 100% 100, 100 uh, with this, the market was doing well, the crypto market was doing pretty well. Uh, so some of the guys uh, having amazing uh, return of investments, they only should, they thought, what if I can show this? What, okay, I've, did, I've done, I don't know, $1 million, what if I can only spend $100,000 to show my profits in a way or another, to show that I can afford this? This is, this is something that for sure it happened. In the same time, uh, some industries already start uh, integrating NFTs in their use cases. Gaming seems to be one of the low-hanging fruits for this. And uh, I think, I do think this is only the top of the iceberg, what we're seeing right now. And I do think that more and more serious projects will start using NFTs to solve some of their, uh, so, or to optimize, not ne necessarily to solve, to optimize some of their internal processes and flows. Yeah. I think it's uh, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> so there's a lot of celebrities that are pushing their NFTs and are selling and are making a lot of money, uh, which uh, made it really popular. So uh, NFTs kind of became pop culture. So people that have no idea what the blockchain is or how Bitcoin works or anything like that thought, hey, Snoop Dogg is selling NFTs. I already bought his wine. I'm going to buy his NFTs. So they win it. That's my theory. What are some misconceptions about NFTs? Something that you hear like every day and you don't agree with that. It's not that what people say it is and so on. Um, the first one that I hear the most, uh, you know that I'm also an art collector, that it's a JPEG or it's a PNG. And uh, 
if they, if they don't understand fundamentally what is an NFT, they are, uh, they are uh, categorizing, categorizing, categorizing it as a an, uh, JPEG or an image. Okay, but go ahead, explain why it's not a JPEG. Okay, so um, when you mint an NFT or a picture on the blockchain, that picture is unique. So um, uh, when you are owning that picture, you are the, the single holder of that unique piece of whatever it is, art, uh, picture, or a song, on, uh, or anything that you are, you are minting. So, did I explain it right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did a decent job. Okay, misconceptions. I, I, I would add uh, to what Abby has said. I, I have exactly the same opinion as Abby does. Uh, so basically the NFT is a digital certificate of owning something, which is usually, and you know, in, 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 in the, uh, the usual case it's uh, artwork, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be. So I heard about an idea of uh, rental. So you own that much time uh, that you can drive a, a car. So the NFT can work as a certificate of ownership uh, for a long time or for a specific time, but it is the certificate of ownership that is not centrally determined by anyone. Yes, yeah, so basically uh, we hear many times that the NFTs are worthless, regardless they are images, or, so they are, they are worthless. In my opinion, as long as something is it's unique, it's impossible to be worthless. Maybe it's worthless for a specific person or a specific audience, but it might be uh, priceless for someone else. So I think this is the, 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 the most important thing. Come on, come on. Another misconception that I'm uh, hearing on a daily basis, I guess, is that um, NFTs are tickets to get rich. <laughs> so they're not tickets to get rich. If you buy an NFT, you're not guaranteed that you're going to make money. So that's something that people don't really say. They say, oh my God, NFTs are the new kid on the block, the new exciting thing, which they are, by the way, on a technical level, on a utility level. They solve the problem of uh, unique certificates, uh, as um, my colleague said here. However, people care about making money most than anything. Uh, is that a bad thing? People, because I have the feeling... Which is not a bad thing, which is not a bad thing, but I guess buying NFTs and trying to sell them at a higher price that they were bought uh, is not really a very benefic and beneficial thing for the whole ecosystem. Because they will, uh, the people that want to get rich quick will be the first ones to dump those projects and those NFTs and they really don't believe in the, in the technology. So I would say um, common misconception is that you buy NFTs and you get rich. No, that may happen to some, but uh, if you don't understand the value of what you're buying, I guess you shouldn't actually do it. Yeah, if you consider that getting rich means getting rich in money, yes, you might lose a lot of money investing in NFTs. But you know, if, uh, I don't know, the, the NFT, for example, it's an NFT done by Gary V, and uh, you are one of the biggest fans of him, then you might just go there without any utility in the back and pay 20K because you like him. So I think, and this is the way you can get rich, but not in a financial way. So I think, yeah, it makes you rich, but uh, in a different way. You mentioned Gary Vee, and Avi got the mic to say that Gary Vee will come to <laughs> brand mine. Not the NFTs uh, that you are, uh, you are buying it would make you rich. The airdrops. <laughs> uh, this is another story. Bogdan. Uh, yes, from a business perspective, uh, I'd say that uh, the most important uh, misconception is that NFTs are uh, an universal solution for any business case uh, you, you'd like to, to build. And uh, this is unfair for FTs, because we also have the fungible tokens. And for many uh, use cases, fungible tokens uh, are the solution, not the NFTs. So uh, I feel like uh, four years ago or five years ago when uh, all the... Uh, beneficiaries when you were providing software solutions were asking for blockchain uh, solutions even they didn't know what was blockchain or if blockchain was the the most uh, appropriate uh, solution for this so uh, i think uh, it's trendy to talk about nfts 
but uh, is not uh, always the right solution for uh, a tokenization project, for example. Yeah, there is no one size fits all. You're coming from a different background, from different industries, and I'm curious to know which are the industries that you think might suffer the biggest disruption because of the development of NFTs in particular, but blockchain in general? Low-hanging fruit playing the, 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 the gaming industry, sorry. The gaming industry by far. Why? Because the audience, it's already used with similar instruments. They only need to change uh, in the process only the way they are logging in or the way they are trading. So, and gaming, for example, it's a huge industry, a huge growing industry. This, I think, it's one of, of, of the, the, again, the low-hanging fruits for the NFTs. Gaming industry, just to give a proper image, is bigger than music and movies together. This is how big gaming industry is. Now, I would say that um, if you look at the geopolitics, I think countries adopting NFTs is a lot bigger than any other industries. So if you look at the money or power or whatever other KPI that you want to measure, countries and states are those that actually um, have more money and more power than, than any other industry. And uh, if we look at uh, Ukraine, that they launched their uh, NFT museum, war museum, so that they can fund their uh, war efforts. Um, it's, I, th I think it's just one example of a state, uh, nation adopting NFTs, uh, and I think this has a major impact on uh, geopolitics and uh, at, at, at a very, very high level. Uh, so, of course, I agree that uh, gaming, in the gaming industry, it's, it's quite big. There are other industries, music and so on. However, when nations adopt NFTs, then we are onto something. Um, at Ovid, we feel like uh, there's three industries that are majorly being disrupted by you know, the blockchain adoption at large, but specifically NFTs. One is uh, large events because we notice that people want to buy specific things that they only they own um, and they can take away with them as a memento, but they can also trade, so it solves uh, the secondary market issue. The second one is uh, hospitality and tourism. Um, as it's being, <clears throat> there's a lot of issues in tourism right now, post pandemic, uh, but there's also a lot of things that can be changed. And it's a huge industry that hasn't changed all that much in the past, I don't know, 50, 60 years. And leisure at large. So I would say leisure at large. How do you use NFTs in tourism? Sorry, I'm curious. Well, kind of in the same way as you do at events. So you, you create specific packages for, uh, um, with limited editions uh, that you, you can output in the market for, let's say, high spenders. Um, and you create a secondary market for tourism, like for specific spots. Um, there's probably a lot more ways that you can do that, but this is one of the, um, the proof of concept uh, tests that we're running right now with the large tourism player. Cool. I think that the fashion industry will be disrupted uh, because you are owning also a, a digital product, not only a physical product, and if you connect uh, the two words, you will get digital products. Um, the, the second thing that I, uh, I totally agree with uh, you guys, uh, gaming is huge, uh, hospitality, and uh, there is another thing that I believe that it will be something unbelievable, popes. Popes will be something huge. Every store, every, uh, I don't know, Eiffel Tower would ha uh, will have a popes in the near future. Kindly explain what's popes. Uh, uh, popes means a proof of appearance, uh, uh, which means when we are going to a store or a Louis Vuitton store or a, uh, Eiffel Tower or you're going to uh, great Chinese wall, you will scan a QR and you, you will take the NFT that will give you access to some other experiences. And I think that this would be something huge. In my opinion, uh, the IP rights uh, have, have to, to go on NFTs because uh, it is uh, a topic uh, 
well known uh, all over the world. Uh, and uh, also, in my opinion, the best use case or, or the most important use case uh, when we talk about NFTs uh, is the digital identity. So somehow any industry where uh, a user has to identify himself can be disrupted uh, in the way it will interact uh, a business with a, a user. So I bet on financial, uh, financial services. We've seen, so I think everyone mentioned a different, a different industry, which makes total sense for us, the people from crypto. But I think it's very relevant for people who are just started to understand uh, the NFTs world. Because if five people who know what they're talking about are analyzing five different industries that will be disrupted, probably we have like a, a few more, which is just not their time yet. I'm curious to know what is one NFT ut utilization that you deeply think it's important and it will be important moving forward, but no one sees it right now. Digital. Uh, connecting products with uh, NFTs and unlocking the, uh, the potential of the meta, uh, unlocking them in, in, in metaverses. So basically it's clothes that you are buying just to show off Clo on metaverse. Clothes, cards, whatever you are thinking of. And uh, I, hate, I have my own thesis that uh, in the near future, owning NFTs would be something like a social proof, uh, something that you cannot fake. What you're having in your wallet would be something like a social proof that who you are. Do we want those social proofs? Sorry, I'm jumping from one question to another, but I think it's important. Do we want a social proof of who we, who we are, or we care less because that's why we use social media to show off, to show who we are, to show to show who we would like to be and not who we are? Well, uh, I'm just uh, answering with a question. Why do you share your monkey, your ape? When you say my, why you share my monkey, it sounds weird. <laughs> so. Uh, why I share my ape? Yeah. I'm sharing it, first of all, because it's a way to show that I'm a, I'm a crypto native. Yes. And secondly, because I had amazing discussions with amazing people who are community. holding an ape. You're a part of a community. Yeah. So uh, I think that uh, having NFTs in your wallet, you are somehow a part of a community. And um, you, can, uh, you can make an opinion about a person uh, uh, about the communities that he, he joined or she joined. Yeah. yeah. Now you, you don't know the question, right? <laughs> because there were like three I questions. No, no. Answer no, no. whatever question you want. So for sure, um, NFTs will be widely used in the DIDs, in decentralized identities, 100%. But many people talk about it. Uh, your question was, uh, what do you think? No one is talking about it, yeah? What, what would be the use case? And here I will not refer only to the NFTs themselves, which are the bricks, but to the apps in the top of the NFTs. So basically, I do think that exactly what Evie mentioned, but a little bit in another way, we do think right now that, okay, the metaverse would put to all of us headsets, VR headsets, and uh, we'll stay all day long in our rooms playing whatever type of games, app, and experiences. In fact, what I do think the metaverse will do, especially thinking to what happened in the past two years with the COVID, I think the metaverse will incentivize people with the NFTs as incentives to get out of their rooms and to participate to events, to participate to concerts, to, 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 to meet with other persons, and incentives will be will be offered based on NFT, like proof of attendance or yeah, something similar. And I think this is a very important instrument to put the people out from the metaverse where they are already, it's only, they are not on the blockchain yet, but they are already spending most of their times Instagram. on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, and on games. And we say, hey, what if you'll just go there, spend two times with this community, with those people, 
and you'll get an NFT which will show that you are part of this community or whatever else use cases, okay? So I think this is the other way to see the usage of the NFTs and of the apps in the top of them. I would say rental. Um, so NFTs are seen as perpetual, uh, as owning something perpetually. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, I, it was not my idea. I heard it uh, waiting in line for an event. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was mind-blowing. So there was this guy uh, who was in a tech company in Japan, and they were working on using NFTs uh, as ways to start and stop the car uh, for rental companies when, uh, when, when uh, uh, the rental time expired. So you'd use your phone to start the car, and when the time is off, if you didn't return the car, then you would stop the car. And this is, you know, this is a very small example, but think of all the things that we rent. Um, we basically uh, rent planes, yeah. and we rent apartments when we travel, we rent rooms in hotels. Uh, there's, there's a lot of renting in the, uh, this Everything, world, so clothes, everything. Yeah, so it's basically fractional ownership. And I think NFTs can all, uh, unlock this in, in a way that we haven't seen before. So this is what I feel like. It's cool. As Bogdan said earlier, I think digital identity is not there yet. I think NFTs are not enough used for digital identity. When we will be able to map, actually we are able right now to map our DNA to a blockchain and uh, tr transform it to an NFT and use it for some sort of uh, utility. Then I think we are onto something. And when this will um, actually be adopted on a larger scale, we, if we think about that, the fact that there are 2.5 billion people unbanked right now, uh, all these people may have access to new revenue or to new ways of conducting business or to participate in DAOs. Um, there are so many things that could be done when you first have a digital identity on a blockchain using NFT. And then moving from there to maybe help banking the unbanked and maybe develop new ways of governance and uh, making money. Why not? Because we're greedy. D did you mention sharing any, uh, having uh, the DNA on an NFT? Yep. That's that's probably the scariest thing that I've heard related to blockchain. <laughs> it's, it's possible. So we've heard the most disruptive, the most interesting, now the scariest. Okay, we're good. Bogdan, you want to say something? Yes. Um, when you asked us about um, a crazy use case for NFTs, uh, I started from uh, thinking about uh, uniqueness. And uh, I feel that here on Earth, the core of uh, human uniqueness is our existence. So what do you say if uh, after you won't be here anymore, you'll keep ex exist on, uh, on Earth uh, in the form of an NFT? You can put in an NFT your whole existence with memories, with everything about what you did here on Earth. I don't know. It's crazy. But Let's is build a new church. Bad? I would like to add to... Is it crazy you, enough? <laughs> it is. It what is. Mihai said earlier that this is, a, this is a scary thought. And I want to ask uh, Mihai, is it scarier to know that uh, 23andMe or any other uh, DNA sequencing... Uh, company owns your data, or is it a bit better just to own it yourself? Excellent question. <laughs> so uh, I'm very passionate about biotech and specifically genomics. Um, and I feel like this is the, the, the biggest change in, in humankind, like the, 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 the whole sequencing of the genome and now using CRISPR to uh, create like new species and bring in all sorts of things to our genome. Um, no, I don't think it's scarier. Uh, <laughs> I, I really don't understand why people uh, take you know, genome sequencing so lightly. But sharing it publicly is a whole other level. <laughs> because it's, it's public, right? As but you could it's find public. Whom, who your relatives are. <laughs> we are very close to the, to the end. And I want to ask one more question before we finish this. Have you bought any NFT and you, if yes, why? If no, again, why? No one wants to answer. I mean, who's on this stage and in this room that didn't? Well, you'll be amazed I mean, how many people don't buy something, but they have opinions about something. Look, you have I, someone. I, I purchased NFT tickets, so <laughs> NFTs plus tickets. I purchased a few NFTs, but um, 
I would just mention here uh, one project that is dear to me, and it's called uh, Subcarpats. And I think these guys uh, didn't actually raise uh, money for the sake of raising money or uh, issued NFTs for the sake of issuing NFTs. They're doing a great job by creating a, a cultural center and uh, engaging with their community. So I think this is one of the m most uh, relevant projects in the NFT space, and I'm not referring in terms of money or in mm -hmm. terms of making quick money with apes. I'm talking about really engaging with the community that is hardcore and also doing something different, which is preserving the Romanian culture and uh, creating uh, something that I don't know if any artist besides Snoop Dogg uh, ever did. Yeah, let's hope they will build the... <laughs> They're doing it. Yeah, so uh, I, I bought a few NFTs. Um, few? Did, few. Uh, few. We know each other. Few, yeah. <laughs> so a few NFTs. And um, the first one I've bought uh, was because I, I, I love the, the, the art. I love the graphics. I'm not an art specialist, but uh, it looked nice, and I thought, hey, what if I would support the creator of this art at the beginning? The next NFTs, I've, bo I've bought them because I love the games, and uh, yeah, I, I wanted to have that specific item, which was unique, and it made a lot of sense to, to buy that specific NFT. And after many times, other NFTs, just for supporting the team behind the project, because this is a way to just show the team that you care about their project and you, 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 you hope the best for it. So and suddenly you had thousands. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, for, um, I started somehow uh, looking for NFTs as art, as a form of investment, like in art. And uh, I found a specific project that I really loved. <laughs> Uh, is uh, an artwork from, uh, it was a series from Damien Hirst, where you can exchange your NFT for mm -hmm. the physical product. Mm -hmm. And I found it really, really interesting. And I have two more weeks, <laughs> the chance to exchange the, um, uh, the actual NFT for, um, for uh, the, the artwork. Would you do it the other way around? Yeah, I was thinking to buy another <laughs> NFT, <laughs> to have also the NFT and also the, uh, the artwork. You are the last one. Okay, talking about <clears throat> tickets and uh, supporting supporting different causes, yes, but uh, I didn't buy uh, the NFTs in the last two years, uh, which were very famous. Um, but uh, I think what's very important is that a lot of people buy NFTs without knowing they are NFTs. For example, a ticketing platform uh, using uh, tokenization uh, behind uh, using blockchain infrastructure for uh, issuing uh, uh, the tickets uh, doesn't have to use uh, blockchain in uh, communication because uh, billions of people use Google and uh, they don't know what kind of uh, machine learning algorithms or uh, what kind of uh, coding language uh, is behind. And I think uh, that I, I like a lot this kind of gatherings because uh, we get we we get together a lot of uh, dreamers and uh, blockchain enthusiasts, but um, I think we have to come back uh, on Earth and uh, we have to build uh, mainstream use cases for blockchain because otherwise next year will be the same here and uh, adoption uh, adoption of blockchain technolo technology won't increase. And I think this is the most, most important thing, building mainstream use cases for blockchain. You know that adoption for, like, when, when, you speak, when we discuss crypto adoption, is the most exponential curve ever, even more than internet. So I think when we are into this industry, we, we tend to lack patience and lack a little of perspective. But I agree with you in the sense of, like, the feeling is that Things are moving slowly and only superficially. I agree with that. And the, and the best things about NFTs, it's, in my opinion, the fact that once you have the NFT, you can use it not only with a single service provider. For example, you get on Airbnb, you get there, you book a whatever, a house, and after you can work only via Airbnb. 
with NFTs, you can go and trade them on any marketplace, and you can send them to any of your friends, and you can uh, uh, lend, uh, borrow them to someone else, and use any other platform that is being created for the NFTs by any other third party. I think this is the beautiful thing of the NFT, and this creates the expo exponential uh, number of opportunities in front of us when we are talking about NFTs. This being said, I think our time is close to an end. So you've heard these people. I think they had some amazing answers. And moving forward, I think we will see more and more industries trying to understand how they can develop with NFTs. We will see more and more people trying to understand the utility of NFTs because I think Punk 6529 said a few days ago, it was difficult for us to explain blockchain before NFTs. Similar to how it was difficult to explain email and everything at the beginning of, uh, of the internet. Right now, with NFTs, it's a lot easier for, for everyone to understand the most important things about, uh, about this industry. This being said, thank you very much. Don't forget, CBDC is evil, and that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>